thank you for having me at your event. Um, and I'm going to cover the state of open source networking and edge and specifically talk about integration into super blueprints. Um, and, you know, from, from my perspective, um, there are four topics that are relevant uh, in, this, in this event, uh, or at least in my speech. Uh, for those of you who don't know, which is hard to believe, a quick introduction to Linux Foundation. Uh, and then we get into the journey of open source technology and projects, and then get into the ecosystem growth as well as the end market pull. Uh, so with that said, let me just sort of step back and look at Linux Foundation and our goal. Our mission is to create the greatest shared technology investment in history to allow for open collaboration. So we are a nonprofit which builds ecosystems. And that's the key word, ecosystems. Anybody can throw projects on GitHub but they don't need a community and those are not the projects we go after. And so what we go after are projects that are either technology disruptors or market disruptors that are critical to the communities. And we host these projects and those are the lifeline of our, uh, of our existence. But then with the developer community, we allow for technology creation, software creation, um, and solutions creator, creation that goes into products. And then products move into deployment, everybody makes money, it gets invested back into the community through participation and the cycle repeats itself. So this is a very important journey. And I'm, I'm bringing this up because when we get to the second half, we will talk about how we can accelerate this journey from projects to production. In terms of the Linux Foundation, we have expanded beyond Linux. And here are some areas that we call umbrella areas uh, that we host projects on, whether it's security, whether it's networking, which we'll talk about today, whether it's cloud, right? So we host Kubernetes or automotive grade Linux or blockchain or edge and IoT, web, AI, et cetera. All these are major areas in which we host projects, over 700 projects, but it, more importantly, either it's a technology area or a market area that we host, we develop, and we change the market trajectory so that innovation can speed up in the open community. Today, the numbers are just staggering. Uh, you know, we are adding a member a day. Uh, most of the Fortune 500 companies use us. Um, quarter of a million developers contributing code, uh, almost 500 plus projects. And then if you look at just the stats through our LFX Insight tools, 31 million lines of code added weekly, 1.1 million pull requests, 10K repositories scanned daily. I mean, there's just some, um, some tremendous stats. And this is thanks to all of you and all the contributors from our community and our members that participate in the overall open source projects. So before we get into the networking, the telecom and the edge aspects of open source, let's take a step back and look at the open sourceification of industries. Uh, Linux Foundation released a white paper called Software Defined Vertical Industries. What this includes is um, an, a, you know, a, a look at multiple hundred plus year old industries that went through a transition of being proprietary to being completely open. And telecom is obviously at the forefront, but industries like automotive, motion pictures, banks, public health, energy, et cetera, they're all hundred plus years old industry. In case of telecom, it's 148 years old. And the first 142 years were proprietary very slow moving proprietary kind of opaque industry. And in just the last seven years, things have gone so fast and over rotated on open source that it is really exciting times. And we are really excited about this whole piece. So if you have not already, please download this white paper from the Linux, Linux Foundation website. It's called Software Defined Vertical Industries. And it will give you a great insight on why open source, how these industries have taken advantage of innovation and move forward. And so now let's get into networking. So now let's get down to the 
uh, telecommunications part or the networking part of things. And now you will realize that the journey has been quite significant in the past decade, right? Where it started with virtualization, disaggregation, software defined networking. That's when control plane came in, control plane, data plane. In fact, I saw, you know, Inder on the on the link. Uh, he's going to talk, but he's he's there. Um, he was one of the, you know, founders, original uh, supporters of Open Daylight. Uh, you know, when I worked with him in the past. But you know, it's a small world, but we have come a long way. Now we're in the Kubernetes cloud native, and now moving to intent based. Uh, the big difference is in the last decade, we just developed projects and technology building blocks for open source. The next decade, we're going to see all these open source projects working together into a common solution. And so if you look at that cycle I showed you, the problem we are trying to solve this year is how to move code into production as quickly as possible. Right, that's the bottom part of the cycle. So we have projects like um, uh, Anuket, which is in LF networking. We have projects like Acreno, which is in LF Edge, that that solve exactly this problem. They look at blueprints and how to actually openly, you know, comply to a spec, uh, do open verification, submit the test results, uh, do open interrupt testing, training, and certification. So that's kind of how. Uh, we are seeing most of the evolution in open source this year. And, and, and so what this is going to do is it is going to integrate a set of projects all the way from access to core into something called a 5G super blueprint. So this initiative was announced uh, last quarter uh, at Open Networking and Edge Summit, the executive forum, and it has been tremendously well received because you know, people want to integrate these projects and use them as a solution. Uh, and, and when I say people, it's the enterprise networking. So whether it's use cases like private networks, workloads across clouds, et cetera, whether it's service providers, end-to-end -end 5G uh, with global connectivity, or it's end users and government, right? So one of our biggest end user here in the US is US government. They are using 5G and LFN super blueprints that was announced uh, earlier. And, and they are going to use it for public safety and tremendous amount of uh, 5G deployments for, think of them as an enterprise. And I think that there is an opportunity for that market. And then beyond that, the edge is slightly customized, I should say, right? Um, industrial manufacturing, energy, uh, commerce. And by the way, this is a linear list of priorities. It's, it's a, it, 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 this is how the verticals are taking advantage of edge computing. Now, uh, healthcare and smart cities are towards the, the lower end of the spectrum, not because it's not important, but it will need a little bit of regulations and, and sort of process controls and things like that to, to update before adoption happens. Okay. Uh, so if I put these projects in a left to right, you can see that we have ORAN, which again, uh, you know, the software community for ORAN is with the Lens Foundation. Um, you have Home Edge. <laughs> Thank you, Samson, for that contribution. That's that's gaining some great traction. We have Fledge, uh, Eve, Edgex Foundry. Like these are all LF Edge projects. Moving into the core on the right hand side, you have the public clouds, uh, and then up the stack, data plane, control plane, and then um, uh, acceleration all the way up to the application. We just moved a project called Magma, which is an open mobile packet core into the Linux Foundation. This is a Facebook contribution. Uh, that has seen a great momentum here where uh, the initial use case was fixed wireless. In fact, I may have the use case next in just a side or two, so I'll, I'll get there. And so that's kind of the core end-to-end. Uh, -end. The other thing I want to go into is uh, Edge. And one thing to make sure, and you know, if you don't remember anything from what I say, just screenshot this diagram because this is standard vocabulary for edge. People have been using various terms, thin edge, thick edge, far edge, near edge, you know, et cetera. They're all relative terms and they don't mean anything. So our community through a Wikipedia style definition through a project called State of the Edge went in and defined the terms. And so I'll just take a minute to define this. There's really two types of edges. There's a user edge, and there is a service provider edge. 
A user edge is dedicated and operated by the user. A service provider edge is shared as a service. But then not all user edges are the same. You can either have a very constrained device edge, which could be microcontroller based embedded compute, or you could have a gateway type edge, uh, where it's semi-secure uh, sort of, you know, uh, in the user control, or you could have an on-prem data center edge, which is secure in a factory building, et cetera. And what separates the two is the last mile. Uh, and on the right-hand side, you have access networks, so under the base station or in a smart central office, which is the access edge. Uh, it's not a hard cut, so you can see the bleeding of the colors there. But the most important thing is edge compute is for applications that need 20 milliseconds or less latency. And this is a very important uh, attribute that edge projects have. So, for example, if a sensor wakes up and dumps data to an Amazon cloud every week, it's an IoT application, it's not an edge application. Right? Just keep that in mind. And vice versa, uh, when we look at the markets, uh, the cloud market thinks of an edge one way, the telecom markets thinks of an edge another way, the IoT market thinks of the edge another way, and enterprise thinks of an edge another way. So what LF Edge as an umbrella is doing is it's unifying the frameworks. And so you can see some of these projects, you will be, you know, going through some of this, the two that I want to point out is Edgex Foundry and Acrano, the largest uh, projects here. And, uh, you know, of course, Home Edge and, and others are growing quite fast. Acrano is, as I, if you remember, is a blueprint uh, concept where the open community comes together, defines a use case, and then through open governance, tests out the use case and interoperability all the way from hardware up to the application, and then submits the results so that people can replicate it. That's a blueprint. It's a declarative configuration with CI, CD documentation, everything. There are about 25 plus blueprints right now, and these are some examples. So autonomous vehicle or connected vehicle or augmented reality learning. Uh, the one that has become very popular with telcos is what is called PCEI, Public Cloud Edge Interface. So how does the public cloud and the service provider at the edge have a common set of interfaces? There are no standards that exist. And so this becomes the de facto standard. Uh, so this is kind of just an overview. I'm sure you, know, you, you, you can get more details. Um, and so if you look at the use cases for core and edge, they're very interesting. You have the ORAN use cases. Most important, obviously, is the slicing. Uh, and the disaggregation that comes with the open RAM. Uh, and you'll hear about it today later. Uh, and then on the Kubernetes side, it's it's really the cloud, uh, multi-cloud hybrid layer below, uh, with uh, Anuket being the standard compliance, and then ONAP, which is the largest and the most important LF networking project. Um, it goes through 5G network slicing uh, and all the use cases for telecom. This is really the fundamental platform, you know, 10 plus million lines of code that is at the heart of network automation. And network automation is must for 5G. Um, the great news is uh, ODAP has been deployed by AT&T for the last four or five years. That's, you know, it's first responders, firefighters, pretty much everybody uses that. Bell Canada deployed it in 17. And, uh, you know, just this week uh, at Mobile World Congress, you saw announcements from Deutsche Telekom, Orange, uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, China, uh, mobile China telecom very active on this. So as a global community, uh, ONAP has matured and it's one of the most uh, important projects to enable end-to-end -end systems. And I know, you know, Geo was, was quite active. They have definitely used several pieces of this to get a lot of the uh, 4G LTE networks automated uh, through through these kind of uh, software projects. Okay. And then on the edge, we have these following use cases. So I won't go into the home edge, uh, you know, because anomaly detection surveillance, very important. But then if you have intermittent connectivity and you want to put an on-prem framework, that's EVE or edge virtualization. It's, it's, a, it's a software project by a startup here in the Valley called Zadeda. Fledge is, is a constrained IoT or IIoT project, right? So predictive maintenance, turbines, transformers, pumps, et cetera. It's also integrated with TensorFlow. So that's kind of uh, an icing right there. Um, 
Edgex Foundry by far is the largest framework for IoT. It abstracts southbound and northbound, so all the messaging protocols and everything northbound. And this is where building automation, smart process control, water cities, et cetera. And then we talked about Ukraine already. So that's kind of a quick overview of, of LFN, LF Edge, how it's all coming together. And so in the last couple of minutes, I want to show you how these projects um, come together into a real solution and, and set of use cases. So if you look at what Linux Foundation hosts, right, we have LF Networking with about 10 projects, LF Edge with another 10, Magma, Cloud Native Computing Foundation with Kubernetes, ORAN Software Community, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we're taking these communities and, in it, and doing uh, an open uh, 5G Super Blueprint integration. So if you're not already participating, I would strongly encourage this is the place to be. And, uh, you know, we'll send you the slides and, you know, the mailing lists and everything is there. And here's how it all comes together. And by the way, there are FAQs and things like that. This is, this is, um, this is right from U.S. government uh, DARPA projects. They want to utilize the 5G Super Blueprint for the U.S. deployment because it comes pre-baked and then only uh, a small set of integration and support is needed by the community or their vendors. Um, so instead of you know 10 vendors doing it 10 different ways, now you have it done in the community and then the vendor can provide innovation and differentiation on top. Okay, so how's it? how does it come together? It's coming together in three phases. Um, let me show you visually. This is just the use cases that are being used. But in terms of the first phase, uh, the community is using emulators uh, on the RAN side. Uh, but Magma is in, being inserted with ONAP, Anuket, Akrano, and Kubernetes, right? Uh, there's some components from Intel, call openness also coming in. But in general, those are the big new components that come in. Uh, at the bottom, you have the NFPI. That that problem has been solved by several 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 folks, so it's not a big deal. Uh, but um, that's the first phase. The second phase is really bringing in commercial G node Bs, right? So the RAN side of things. Um, that that will get uh, integrated, and then you are going to run a slice through this. So the end-to-end -end network slicing comes in. And then the last phase, which is towards the end of the year, first part of next year, is when ORAN comes in. Uh, what's already happened is ONAP and ORAN are already deeply integrated with Oban Avon interfaces. Also, the SMO in ORAN is uh, built off the building blocks from ONAP, right? So there's a lot of component reuse between projects that, because these are all microservices, containerized uh, modules, and you can just use them as needed and it will just get you a head start. And so uh, that's already happening. And then this brings in the full end-to-end -end network slicing uh, for, the, for the industry. So you can see that the integration is happening uh, from in the community. And you know, I would love to have you, uh, you know, be part of this. So to wrap it up, um, I would say uh, completing the solution into a fully integrated stack is, is the top priority, which means Speeding up the back end process is critical, which is open interop, open compliance, uh, you know, all Kubernetes based uh, uh, solutions. Uh, and um, finally, once that happens, the deployment into these vertical markets and the vertical use cases uh, from core to edge to access. Uh, and these could be industrial, uh, smart homes, retail, government, uh, or any enterprises. So we're really excited with uh, what is going on, and I don't know if we are, we have time to take questions. I can, if you want, or we can stop here. Thank you very much, Arpit. Uh, yeah, we do have one question. Since it's just one, uh, we can take it if it's okay. Yes, please. No problem. Yeah. So the, basically, the question is that we know, uh, as you mentioned in your one of your slide, that open source is not what people think. That just take it and use it and deploy it. It's dangerous. So the question is around a similar thing, saying that what is the stability of open source five G and can we make a scalable network or deploy as a scalable network using open source? Correct. Uh, so uh, again, let me explain five G in t context of all three uh, areas. Right, the access the edge and the core. Uh, so the 
and 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 that is like if you don't talk about the technology meaning the 3gpp version the ran side the air interface right which is kind of fairly mature uh, and standardized right so that can be deployed uh, the rest of the pieces uh, are are uh, there are two pieces so out of the four pieces uh, two are fairly mature so what is mature is the network automation the control plane and then the nfvi right so everything that is gluing the plumbing from the core and orchestrating everything from core to edge to access, right? These blueprints are fairly mature. They are deployed. Most of these projects are live and in production, right? So that to me is the first step that needed to happen. Uh, what is being uh, integrated in open mobile packet core, which is really the Magma project. So Magma is deployed uh, on the 4G LTE front uh, globally and in, in several use cases. The 5G uh, load is now merged from the open air interface side of things. And so Magma itself as an open mobile packet core in the Q3 timeframe uh, will be fairly mature and through the testing of these blueprints uh, should be ready by the end of the year, right? Till then, it is a proprietary mobile packet core, right? From the, from the usual five suspects of the world. <laughs> <laughs> including you know you guys uh, the ran as is 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 also in a similar stage where uh, oran sc which is the software community has now finally uh, moved into the fourth release or the d release as they call it so because of that uh, it is fairly mature uh, pretty much everything that is at the uh, higher layers of the stack is mature uh, we're still looking at, I think, the lower layers, right? The radio and, and things like that will, will clearly stay proprietary, but the disaggregation concept is mature. So I would say, as again, similar time frame through the end of the year, the alternative till then is proprietary. Now, now in, in that context, um, you know, you saw a lot of announcements at the Mobile World Congress on Open RAN this and Open RAN this, right? And at the end of the day, if you need the code for Open RAN uh, or ORAN Alliance, I should say, uh, keep in mind there's Open RAN, ORAN Alliance, ORAN SC. There's just uh, quite a bit of confusion, uh, you know, thanks to the marketeers. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's the main body is the ORAN Alliance. Linux Foundation is partnering with the ORAN Alliance to host what is called ORAN SC or the software community. So we run the software community, which is the open source version for the ORAN Alliance. That is what is the D release, and that's that's heading there to be to be mature. There's no not a lot of other open source alternatives if unless you want to go proprietary. Thank you very much, Arpit. That was really insightful journey. And uh, I mean it's really important and useful to understand the 5G blueprints. Excellent. Uh, Absolutely. And I would also uh, recommend, you know, people take a look at how some of the largest of the large carriers have deployed open source, right? AT&T, Deutsche Telekom, uh, Orange, Bell Canada, right? Um, and they have actually not just deployed, they have contributed, they have influenced, and they have really changed the economics of deployment, right? I mean, they're going to run probably one tenth of the operation cost, right? A significant operational savings, right? Versus taking a fork and then uh, doing, you know, putting 100 engineers on it and then saying, you know, I'm doing open source. And I'm saying that because I kind of, you know, we think that way and that's not the right way to think. Right. Thank you once again. And we really appreciate you joining us from Bay Area. I know it's night, Friday night for you. No worries. Uh, no, thank please you. Please accept a me. virtual token of appreciation, <laughs> though we cannot meet offline. No, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.